<laughs> Hi, I'm Diane. I'm an animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo. Welcome to the Clouded Leopard Great Forest. Today we're going to be meeting Filbert, our Prevost Squirrel. Yesterday was National Squirrel Day, so we thought this would be a great time to meet Filbert and also celebrate his birthday, which was earlier in the week. So today we'll be talking about um, some ways that Prevo squirrels, including Filbert, are very similar to the squirrels we have here in Illinois. So you can see that Filbert uh, looks very similar to our native squirrels, except for his fur color. Like all tree squirrels, he has a lot of adaptations that help him live in the trees and make his way in his native habitat. Prevo squirrels are native to Asia. So he doesn't have to contend quite with the cold climate that we have. Um, so he is not quite as furry and he's a lot more colorful because his environment is different in coloration than the environment we have around here. But like all tree squirrels, Filbert has um, long arms and legs for climbing. He has claws that help him grip the branches and help him get around. He also has a long fluffy tail that you can see right now, similar to the squirrels that live in this area. And that long fluffy tail he uses for a variety of things. It helps him climb because it gives him more balance. When you saw him up high earlier, he had his tail out and he was using it to help him balance on the branches. Now when he's on the ground, he can curl it up and it's out of his way while he's moving around. Um, and it can provide him with a little bit of sunscreen. The other thing they do use their tail for, just like the squirrels we have here, is at night when they sleep, they will roll up in a little ball and wrap their tail around themselves. And that can help keep them warm when it's chilly at night. And if you can see Filbert's face now that he's in the light, uh, he has pretty large eyes it's hard to see with his black fur, uh, but his large eyes help him see. And his eyes, like all the squirrels we have, are on the side of his head because he needs a good um, depth of vision so that he can see uh, all the branches that he's climbing on and get a good view of where he's going so that he doesn't fall. Uh, again, like the squirrels we have, he has a very similar activity pattern. Prevo squirrels are active in the morning and at night, uh, right before it gets dark. So just like the squirrels you might see in your yard, he wakes up early in the morning when it starts, the sun starts to come up. Um, if he was in the wild, he would be foraging around. Then he might take a nap in the middle part of the day. And then later in the day when it starts to get toward dusk, they come out and forage some more. At night, just like the squirrels we have, Prevost squirrels would take shelter in a nest. Um, he could either be in a hollow tree or they can build nests similar to the ones we see here where the squirrels take old branches, uh, little twigs and leaves and build a round nest where they can sleep in and be safe. Um, just like the squirrels we have, Another um, pattern that they have is they don't hibernate. Um, most tree squirrels do not hibernate, unlike chipmunks or woodchucks that are also in the squirrel family. Um, they remain active throughout the year. Also, these guys are mostly solitary, similar to the squirrels we have. Um, in the wild, they would not live in groups. They would live mostly alone except for a mother and her little pups. So you can see Philbert right now is doing his morning foraging. He has a lot of um, food items that we give him on a daily basis. Right now he's looking for some special treats that he got today for part of his birthday. And those are little insects called mealworms. You may have seen other animals eating mealworms for some of these other Facebook live chats or other times you visited the zoo. They're very popular, most animals love them, and they are one of Filbert's favorite foods.
to keep Filbert engaged in his environment and to provide him with activity and help keep him healthy, we do scatter a lot of his food items in the exhibit so that he can observe his natural behaviors of looking for food and finding it on his own. So right now, he's looking for all those mealworms that are scattered all over the exhibit for him to find. They also, similar to the squirrels that live here, are very important for seed dispersal. So, in the wild, these guys eat, um, rather than some of the things that our squirrels eat, a lot of what they eat is fruit because they live in the forest. And in the Asian countries where they live, it's pretty warm. There's a lot of fruit available. And then when they eat the fruit, um, they may carry it away from the tree that it's on to another location. And when they're done eating the soft part of the fruit, they'll drop the seed. And that can help this, the parent plant uh, disperse seeds to other areas away from the main plant. As I mentioned, uh, Philbert's birthday was earlier this week and he's 15 years old. So this is a special day for him. Uh, he is in very good health. He's an awesome little guy. And we think he's super cute. <laughs> So what's their lifespan? Uh, the lifespan in the wild would be um, around five to 10 years. So in his native habitat, he would be exposed to um, predators. He might have a hard time finding food. And of course, if he was to get sick in his native habitat, he doesn't have medical care. Here in the zoo, he has amazing medical care. He has food available every day. Um, he is not exposed to predators, so in zoos, prevo squirrels can live um, between 10 and 20 years. So we're hoping that Filbert will be with us yet for a few years. What types of predators would they have in the wild? Uh, in the wild, a lot of animals might try to catch a squirrel because the squirrel is pretty small. However, it would have to be an animal that can be fast and can get up into the trees. So their main predators are birds of prey, uh, like eagles, and then smaller animals that can climb, like martens, or uh, even some arboreal snakes that climb, especially if the snake can get into a nest where maybe a squirrel might be sleeping. Okay. Are they as chatty as the squirrels here in America? Um, Philbert does talk to us sometimes. <laughs> uh, he doesn't talk to us a lot, but when we feed Filbert, um, he is trained to go into a crate uh, so that when we go into the exhibit to put out his food, he sits and eats his um, breakfast treat. And when it's time for him to do that, he'll often vocalize to us just to say good morning and let us know he's ready, he's paying attention. Is he the only squirrel here at Fragile Kingdom? Filbert is our only squirrel right now. Um, as I mentioned, they are solitary in the wild. Um, in the past, we have had multiple squirrels, but right now, uh, Filbert's our only squirrel, and he's got his own bachelor pad happening here. <laughs> uh, what's his favorite snack? Uh, Filbert has a few different favorite snacks. He gets certain diet items every day. So he gets um, fruits and vegetables every day. They vary from day to day, so um, no two days in a row is his diet the same. He also gets a different type of leafy greens every day and a different type of complete chow diet every day. Then in the afternoon, he gets his special snacks. And those also are variable from day to day. His favorite probably is the little mealworms that he's eating right now. His other favorite is different types of nuts, which he really likes. And he also likes um, other different types of fruits and vegetables. Squirrels will pretty much eat any kind of vegetable matter that they can get. Very similar to the squirrels we have here. Why are they called Prevost squirrels? Um, they were named after an explorer who, who named them um, that first described them to Western science. Uh, why is his back such a dark color and his belly is a lighter color? That's a really great, great question. 
Um, a lot of animals you see have that color pattern where they might be darker on top and lighter on the bottom. If you imagine um, looking for a squirrel, if you're on the ground and you're looking up for the squirrel and he's in the branches, um, he might blend in a little more with the branch because you're not seeing the, the shape of a squirrel. You're seeing kind of an abstract shape if you look up and you're a predator and you're trying to find him. It might make it appear like instead of an animal that you're looking at the sunlight on a branch. And if you're looking down from the top and you're a predator, you're seeing the dark back color, he might blend in a little bit more with the dark background. So it kind of helps him uh, blend in and be concealed, even though here in the zoo it makes him seem flashy and bright. If he was in his native habitat, it would really help him blend in more. Uh, how long has he lived here at uh, the Clouded Leopard Rainforest? Uh, Philbert was actually born here at, at the zoo. So he's lived here his entire 15 years. Um, is, it, is his tail prehensile? Uh, their tail is not prehensile. They are not able to use it for gripping. Um, but as you see him walking around here, you can see that sometimes it's curled up over his back. Sometimes it's out straight. So he can control it and move it, but it's not really strong enough to grip things. Um, it is used mostly for balance or uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, when they're sleeping, he will curl it up around himself to help them stay warm. Is he about the same size as the gray squirrels that we have here in Chicago? He is a little bit smaller than a gray squirrel. So he's probably um, a couple inches uh, less in body length and a couple inches less in tail length. Your average prevost squirrel weighs maybe a little under two pounds. Um, and including the tail, they're about a foot and a half long, give or take a couple inches. So he's slightly smaller than a gray squirrel. Uh, does he like to run up in his, I don't know, his habit trail? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, it, it would be hard to show in Facebook, but Philbert does have access not only to this exhibit, but to a system of tunnels that leads out above the guest walkway here in the, in the rainforest exhibit. Um, and he enjoys running through those tunnels during the day. Now while the zoo is closed and the keepers are out on the walkway, he likes to see what we're doing sometimes, and he'll run around in that um, tunnel system looking for the keepers to see what we're up to. He also builds a nest usually up in the tunnel system. Uh, so in addition to the nesting place that is provided in the exhibit, he builds his own with any kind of leaves or uh, nesting materials that we give to him. Look, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, in their native habitat, as I mentioned, <laughs> these squirrels would live in a forest. Uh, one of the main things that's happening in their native habitat right now is people are cutting down the forest to build uh, palm oil plantations that for palm oil that's grown to be used in food products. So the squirrels are a little bit luckier than some animals because they can still live in the palm oil plantations, maybe not as much, and they would only have access to um, one type of food, but they do eat the palm oil nuts. So they are able to survive in those plantations when many animals um, are not. So they're a little bit lucky in that respect. So if you're ever shopping for food items or cosmetic items that contain palm oil, um, it's important to look for products that contain oil that's sustainable. Um, and there is a certification for that for, from a group that's called RSPO. So if you're looking um, at products in your store and you look for something that's certified by RSPO, that means that palm oil it contains was produced in a certifiable way, in a sustainable way, um, and it is certified as sustainable, and that can help protect um, some of these animals that can still live in those areas where the palm oil is being grown. Do you know what his conservation status is? Um, right now, 
their official status in the wild is least concern, but like m many animals, their population has started to decrease um, and it's continuing to decrease over time, but right now they are not officially in danger. Uh, is there a certain spot he prefers to sleep and how, how much does he sleep during the day? Um, well, like I mentioned, in their native habitat, they're active mostly early in the morning and late in the day. So Philbert kind of observes a very similar pattern here at the zoo. When keepers first arrive in the morning, that's when he's very active. He is waiting for us to give him his breakfast. And then um, the middle part of the day, he'll usually rest a little. And then later in the afternoon, when it's time for his afternoon snack, he'll get active again. So when he's resting, most of the time, he either sits on high branches um, in the exhibit if he's waiting for us to come and feed him, or he will wait in his nest um, in those tunnels, and he'll sleep in his little nest that he's built in the tunnel when he's really taking his nap. Um, just now, he went into his food bowl and got part of his veggies for the morning. That's what he's working on there right now. And you can see how he's using his tail to balance, just like I said. So thanks everybody for joining us here to see Philbert and wish him a happy birthday. We really appreciate your support and thank you for joining Brookfield Zoo. We hope to see you again soon.